Hello there. Kyle Katarn here. And the Ben. Coming back for another reaction to The Bad right. Batch. Season 3, episode, episode 13. 13. Shout out to Nerd Chronic for editing this reaction for us and sneaking it past the Disney blockade. Um, the last one was pretty fun. We had like turbo tank action. You know what I mean? Which was exactly the, epit the epitome of the juggernaut title. Like it definitely wasn't very painful circle obvious very fast. What this what the theme of the episode was gonna be. And then yeah, even the description of while seeking an unexpected source, the batch must make a daring escape. But like the whole I don't know how I feel about having Rampart battle. like on the team. He's not really on the team though, right? Yeah. It's just no. like we're gonna discard the source when we're done with him, I'm hoping. I was gonna say the fact that the, like the scene of just them completely potato sack throwing him from one <laughs> ship to the other was absolutely hilarious. Like the fact that you were able to make a gif of it and put it on your Twitter was just like phenomenal. Of, like, oh yeah, my god, like, um, that gif was made by D Digitalis, by the way. Shout out to her. She um, she made the gifs on Discord. Um, but, but yeah, episode thirteen into the breach. So into like the we breach. still that, don't is know that where the episode title. Is. Yeah, into the breach. That's pretty ominous, man. Uh, what's the description say? The batch prep for a gambit in enemy territory. In enemy territory. Are we thinking this so, is like the big one? Is, is the enemy territory going to be Tantus or are we doing something along the way? Maybe this is so what Rex and like Echo what, have been up to? That's true. But I mean, like, that's kind of what Rampart was saying, right? Like, not a lot of Imperial officials, for some reason don't actually know the coordinates or the address for Tantus because it's I'm still wrapping changing. my head around how that works but, just logistically, yeah. you know? Like, every because every time we see Tantus, it's very much like a very foresty-looking environment. So it's like, unless they're on a giant lion turtle that's just floating around Mount space Mount Tantus somewhere. is on the planet Wayland. We know this from, from Legends, and it's all mm -hmm. but canonized with everything else we know about Tantus so far. It's going to be on the planet Wayland. I don't know why they changed that detail. I'm the only thing that I could the only thing that I can think of to make sense of how like no one can know the coordinates and yet they have constant shipping to and from this world is that there's some sort of like automated encrypted subroutine in the Navi computer that like you have to have security level clearance to like push the big button. But once the button is pushed, it'll automatically lay in the course and then take you there and then wipe it from the Navi computer history or something. You know what I mean? Potentially. It's so like, I would, so it's like a as black ops automatic that, pilot that'll like guide your ship in, and you don't okay. get to know where it is that it's that you're going. Maybe something like that. So I was kind of thinking or remembering the uh, like the sphere map that we got to see in Ahsoka, but then also right. the Sith Wayfinder that we got to see in um, Return of the Jedi. No, not Return of the Jedi. Rise of Skywalker. Kyle Rise of Skywalker. The Wayfinder. Yeah, that's how that's how he finds uh, Exegol. That's right. Yeah, so, like, and then, you know, to kind of use a Mission Impossible sort of reference, like, it could very, you know, they could very well, like, give it a thing of, like, here's a floppy disk with the address. As soon as you plug it in, it's going to self-destruct in 15 minutes. <laughs> so, like, Every single you know, one of those or, cargo ships that flies into Tantus explodes on its way back out. So that no one ever... Right, knows. like, maybe it They've is, They've got like, enough pilots all... in the Empire. They can just keep throwing them in there. Whatever. Or droids. <laughs> I mean, if they really wanted to, like, we, we saw it at started to see some some uh, using droids to just bombard other other ships into shit so do you think like here's a question do you think that in this time period in the galaxy there's a lot of like droid phobia because of the clone wars because we know that din Djarin like had a major beef with droids because of his experiences you know with like separatists and everything so do you think that like there's a lot of stigma about using droids for stuff like in this time just because of what just happened with the the trade federation and battle droids and like Probably not because there's because I'm sure there's other companies out there that make service droids and protocol droids and it's not like the Gonk company took any hard financial hits during that period hey, of man. time. Or Industrial like, Automaton or, is, it, or is, it, is it a corporation that keep their nose clean. They would never yeah, exactly. sell themselves so, like, with the separatists. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I'm sure there are plenty of other you know like Toyota, Honda. Like I'm sure there's plenty of other droid manufacturers out there that like totally. people are like, oh yeah, our planet like or Naboo. Well, I, I well, mean, I don't mean like I don't mean like the battle droids Naboo themselves specifically, but like like droids from every manufacturer are now kind of getting the side eye because of what the battle droids did. You know, that's kind of what I meant. Like, my I, feel, I don't, yeah, potentially not as much so. If 
if artificial intelligence was more of an issue within the Star Wars universe and there was some like either A, some sort of droid uprising or B, if like a singular individual, I don't know, like if there was some cyber terrorist who like hacked into a bunch of droids and then used a bunch of droids to like shoot up, you know, a neighborhood, like. I mean, knows? that's kind like, of kind of how Dark in Droids there. goes down in the comics, except he doesn't shoot up a neighborhood. He tries to like take over the galaxy. Yeah, but so like, it's like, I don't know. And then there's the other droid that, the homicidal droid that is in Dr. Afra, who isn't necessarily an assassin. Triple zero. Droid. Yeah, he's just homicidal, but still a protocol droid, like, versus so, Mr. Triple Bone. Zero, tri the, the reason Triple Zero is all crazy is that he's a run-of-the-mill protocol droid, but then he has, like, an insane experimental personality matrix that's been installed in him. And yeah. that's what makes him all homicidal and crazy. He's, like, one of a kind because of that. You know what, though? Like, you were talking about AI. Maybe AI is a problem in the Star Wars galaxy, and we just don't know. Because, like, think about how many famous actor characters are there in Star Wars? You know? All the actors in the yeah. galaxy are out of work because of fucking AI. So maybe maybe it is a problem. <laughs> well, no. Well, I mean, we get to see the opera singer. So there are some things that oh, droids just sure, can't. Yeah. I'm, I'm being 110% facetious, but, like, oh, I don't know. Funny. Something to think about. Awesome. Well, the episode is out. Are you ready, best friend? Do it! Oh, look at On the planet's Wayland. Look, at those look, you see how there's a whole other-ass mountain behind them? There's a whole second like, facility we know nothing about. Like, it's so beautiful, and yet there's this ho these horrible things happening on this planet. It's insidious. Who's this guy? Damn. Hate seeing in her her in here like this, you know? Still slightly better than the prison from Andor. I still think it was Rampart's deadly mistake, like, yeah. putting Omega in with these kids. She's gonna, like, inspire them to to rise up and they're getting out of here. I'm Omega. I'm Eva. What's that? They want us to play them. Why do they want you to play the games? It's like an aptitude thing. Maybe it's just a distraction. That's Jax, Sammy. Rumors the Oh god. Oh wow, there's, there's oh, a yeah, baby. A little cat thingy. I totally forgot about that one. You don't like it when we talk to each other so much. I hate it. And if you cause problems, things only get worse. And Jax is starting to get his spirit broken. Ooh. Bespin? <laughs> oh my god, look That looks like some Tabana gas, man. <laughs> Oh my god, the colors. Where in the blasted galaxy did that pirate abandon us? Please say Bespin. You prefer we take you back to that Imperial labor camp instead? Yeah, shut up, Rampart. Don't complain. You'll get your freedom when we get the exact coordinates to that base. This is before, fair deal. This is obviously before Empire Strikes Back, yeah. Decades. So I guess that just Woo! kind of goes... I guess that kind of there just he is. Show. That Palpatine's really been thinking about the immortality thing for a long time. Oh, he's been obsessed with it ever since he killed his master. I do enjoy Scruffy Rampart, though. It's a good look for him. Any ship going there must first dock at Imperial Station 003, in orbit over Coruscant, where the coordinates are transmitted directly to the... Okay, Navigator. okay, so it was kind of what I was thinking. Oh, and then... Like... Automated. They'll, they'll black bag you and then escort you there. That means they got to get into Coruscant airspace, get on board that thing, and find the device that transmits the Navi computer codes. Once we reach the station, we can find a ship departing for Tantis and pull the coordinates. They're going to need Imperial clearance. Oh yeah, we even saw got that we even saw them pulling into this station when they did the prisoner handoff to, to hand over the baby. We'll be your security detail. You just walk us right onto the station. Cannot be serious. But Rampart's supposed to be in custody. They're gonna notice that. I can't wear this. It's a captain's uniform. I was a vice admiral. <laughs> well, you've been demoted. Come on, man. Yeah, he Rampart sucks. sucks. Bro, he's such he a sucks. shitty character. <laughs> he's such a shitty character. Every every bad thing that happens to him is really vindicating for me because he's voiced by the same. The actor who also plays Bode Akuna in uh, Jedi Survivor. That fucking guy. The other kids. Where did they come from? I don't know. 
but they are well looked after here. <laughs> How can you say that with a straight face? You guys just put a kid in solitary for 48 hours. Was one of those implements like a ceramics tool? I mean, one of them looked like a dental toothpick. Who's this fucking guy? One of them guy had like the little stand. closed loop wire that you use to cut into like a pot, you know? Nice. She's just studying and going, studying. You and can't, going. you can't keep her down. Like she constantly is coming up with new ideas, staying on top. She is constantly. I have every things. faith in Omega to rescue herself and these kids. You know, she's not gonna have to wait around for the batch. Letting Omega intermingle with the specimens is unwise. You're not wrong. I'm the chief scientist. I will run the vault as I see fit. Sure. So the scientist is just a hater. Raising very valid concerns, honestly. How often do the droids take our vitals? Twice a day. What about the trippers? Do they ever come in here? Jax tried to escape once, but he didn't get very far. This is giving me vibes of Andor. How many guards on each level? Never more than 12. They're like, hmm, how can we turn Andor into something for kids? Look. It's a layout of the vault. Nice. That's so clever. These are the walls. These are the tubes in the Did you notice that these little card tokens look like Chapur snippets from episode one? I just need them not to see me. Won't take them long to notice you're missing. That's okay. Honestly, they could spend a whole episode on this. That'd be great. Like, go full Hogan's Heroes with it. Bro, I love that the, tr the baby is just, like, feeding the color chips to its dog. <laughs> it's like, it's that poor baby is innocent and pure, and nothing bad can happen to it. All the armor's been stripped, but we're still not gonna... Oh, dude. Dude, all dude the they stripped all, all the paint off. <clears throat> this is as close to season one batch as we're ever gonna see. Damn, bro, Keeping the go. beard? Bro, like the choice. Of... It's not like they had a razor on him. It's not like they would trust him with a razor. Oh, you know what, dude? We've seen this exact model of orbital station before, remember? Hera flew the ghost and like went to hyperspace through the launch bay of one of these in Rebels. That was one of the coolest moves. You're clear to land at docking bay 5 tac 2 We can't stay docked for long. Oh, oh, oh. The shuttle's bound to be reported missing. That's a great perspective shot. You see that? What assurances do I have that you'll let me go? You're going to have to trust us. Just like we have to trust you. Oh, great. So, a situation that everyone's uncomfortable with. <laughs> I know how to carry myself. You're the ones that are going to stand out like overheated Gamori. Oh, my God, this guy. Oh, well, look at that shot, man. Love well, it. I mean, the orbital station's pretty dark. And it's been up there for, like, decades. This was a, that was a particularly Star Wars landing landing God, sequence right here. To floors. That's really what I love so much about this this time period is just like the, the space brutalist aesthetic, you know. Let's get this over with. I really hope that at some point during this caper, the ship they have to cost. throw his lifeless body like a sack of bricks again, and that just becomes a running gag like every mission. Someone has to throw oh. Rampart. <laughs> Who is responsible for this vessel? It is not on my docking manifest for today. Jesus Christ, are beards just like in style in the Empire all of a sudden? My division and my orders are classified. If you have an issue with that, Lieutenant, then contact Governor Tarkin. Issue. Now carry on. Uh, yes. So sorry, sir. Name drop. Man, he got so lucky right there that... The rank plaque he's been given was higher than that dude's. <laughs> you could see it on his face too. He was like, now listen here, you, and he like studies his chest. Oh, thank God, you're a lieutenant. Yeah, now listen here. If that dude had also been a captain, the whole plan would be fucked right now. Yeah. This is horrible. Ooh, I like the, the TK trooper with the respirator plate right that's there. Kind that's of, pretty that's clean. That's really cool, yeah. That's very Ralph McQuarrie you looking. You must be a pilot. You are relieved. Sir, we just started our shift. Perhaps Wait, you'd Rick? like to spend a few rotations in the brig for violating Article 3. Wrecker's not gonna- he's gonna stick out too much. That's true. That's true. At least these three have similar silhouettes, you know? Sir? You, show me the station manifest. I will need your access card, Captain. I love it. Look at these in New Hope outfits. Here, the color contrast. Oh. 
I love all the red, whites, and blues of the console buttons. Dude, There's... the red the red wall panels is such There's an iconic no like seventies Death Star design. I love it. Yes. Oh shit, Lieutenant Beardo's back. Captain. Uh, captaining. <laughs> there is an inconsistency with this shuttle's base of origin. Is there? I will need you to verify your vessel's signature key. Oh, um, sure thing, boss. Right this way. I need you to select all of the pictures that do not have mailboxes. Just donkey punch. <laughs> Can you crack the encryption or not? I'm working on it. He's like, my hand is literally a USB. Can you back off? I know, right? Like, I'm literally... like, come on, man. I'm doing the best I can. The science vessel docked in Bay 8 is set to depart for Tantis. And soon, the vessel's tagged for direct uplink after it launches. Which means there's no way to get the coordinates. You have to be on the ship. Slip your mind. You expect me to know technical details like that? Okay, so st stow away aboard the vessel. As soon as you drop out of hyperspace, hijack it, make a note of your coordinates, and then get the fuck out, you know? Science vessels have heightened security protocols. There's no way you can all sneak aboard under- It only takes one. But I can. Bro, we only have three episodes left. Once you're aboard, find oh, a way we'll to see, disable the proximity see. sensors. We'll follow behind, then attach our shuttle to the hull, and hitch a ride directly to Tantis. Now oh, wait, just- This is a ballsy plan, man. I like it. Wonderful. Also, shouldn't Echo, of all people, shouldn't he be like a famous, a famous figure in, in just the military of the galaxy at this point with the things he went through? I feel like he'd be yeah, recognized on the base. That's a gorgeous shot. Really Top-down cool. view of the mountain like that? God damn. Hurry up, Omega. The hater's coming. And she'll use any excuse to get you separated. Take you out of Gen Pop here. Ooh! All right, kids. Time to make a distraction. This is so Alcatraz, man. Hello, Dr. Scalded. Something wrong? Hmm. That was a close one. But now she knows how hollowed out that wall is. Well, I mean, like, we saw the wall open up for, like, the vials to go in it and stuff, so we know there's compartments back there, at least. What did you find? Our way out. Yeah, I mean, if they get in there and climb directly up, they can maybe make it to, like, somewhere close to the summit of the mountain, at least. Or they could just and there's slide the science vessel. down to the basement. Plot and block out. I want to watch just a montage of all the establishing wide shots from the Bad Batch. Like, I'm sorry, you could not have picked a more conspicuous silhouette of a clone for this mission. A clear domed astromech. We usually only see those at Comic Cons. Oh, and there's the vacuum. I love it. That's the old school. We've seen it twice now. Fee had one on her ship, too. And then before that, we haven't seen it since, like, A New Hope. <laughs> Oh, come on. Are you kidding? No nice. one saw or heard anything. <laughs> oh my god, it like inch down closer for the mouse droid. Are you serious? Pretty sure that commando just saw it. Like, outright. That was a close one. Initiate launch sequence. Here yes, we sir. go. We've got at least two commandos. Troopers all over this thing. Seizing control of this ship's not really going to be an option. I mean, is this is this mission going to lead to an assault on Tantus? I thought we were just collecting the coordinates, but it sounds like we're about to, like, be there, you know? Well, I mean, they have to steal the coordinates and then, I mean, somehow get to Echo. Well, they need to steal the coordinates and then the, the Batch are going to try and, like, attach and hitch a ride with the science vessel. Sure. Picking up unscheduled droid activity in the cargo hold. Nice. He's coming up as droid activity. It doesn't sense a life form, just a scomp link, you know? This isn't going to work. The proximity sensors will detect us and shoot us down. Relax. Echoes on it. It's true. I love that Crosshair, with all his rough edges, has, like, total respect for Echo's competency, you know? It must have been a malfunction. 
so proceed. Echo will come through. He just needs more time. Which we don't have. Abort the mission. Negative. Come on, Echo. This is some sweet music. Oh my God, Doc! With it, they're about to go. Bro, what upside? Down. Nice. Upside down. Who? man. How did they do? How? <laughs> oh, and that's the, and that's the end. Hot damn. That was a great little docking sequence right at the end, and he was able to lo lower the proximity sensors like just at the last seconds. There was really cool music during that sequence too. Like that kind of gave it kind of like a like an '80s vibe, really like kind of throwback sci-fi. No, that was this was a fun episode. This was um, you can feel it like the calm before the storm, can't you? Like I mean, we have shit's about to completely left. break loose and go crazy, but this was like that last little because. I thought we were just going to find the coordinates, but like they're about to be on the doorstep of Mount Tantus. And, and are they going to be able to flee the system with that information? Or are they going to have to just like, you know, make do with this, with what's going on and like launch their assault right then and there. We don't have everybody. Rex isn't here. We haven't gathered all of our other allies that we've spent the whole series, you know, recruiting for this eventuality. Like that's, that's always what the format was, you know, um, where are all of them? I don't think we have the manpower just on our own, so I don't think, I don't think we're going directly to Tantus from here. I, I feel like I feel like whatever happens is going to happen before they're ready, you know, one way or another. I don't think that they're going to be setting the terms of this final confrontation. They're going to get caught unawares. Hemlock's got something up his sleeve. There's there's more that we don't know yet. But God, dude, there's only like two episodes left. I'm nervous. That's what I was trying to figure out. If we, yeah, that's I'm what nervous. I was trying to figure out. If we have 15 episodes or if they're giving us 16 episodes. It's 15. It's 15 confirmed. <sighs> and this is 13. So, like... We have two more. We are, we are balancing <gasps> on a knife's edge. And there's two episodes left to wrap it up. And man, am I nervous. Man, am I and nervous And none of them are double drops either. And none of them And now, are yeah, drops. and like because it's the final season and because we know the story can effectively end here... Every time a character does anything, I'm terrified for them now. Like, when Echo was like, I can get on that ship. I can get the signal. I'm like, no, Echo's going to die. Like, was my, my gut reaction was like, we're going to lose Echo, and it's going to happen right here. I hate it. I hate that I'm being conditioned this way to just fear death around every corner. And I blame, I blame shows like Game of Thrones for changing how the audience, like, reacts to and anticipates death. Now it feels like no character is safe anymore. And that didn't always... I feel like that wasn't always the case. You know what I mean? It's true. I 100% agree. Like we've been traumatized by like the Red Weddings of all these these different shows that are out now. Um, yeah, this was a fun one. All I, have to, all I have to really say is that it makes me... You know, it makes me think about what's coming next. This, was, this, this felt like such a precursor. The whole thing did. Uh, again, the artwork and the visual effects department just gave us portrait oh after God, portrait yes. and just absolute uh scenic just absolute scenic beauty and just a lot of the, the details are insane in this. um yeah from the forest to a lot of the moving water that we got to see uh uh i can't think of the island planet right now i always just think of it as atlantis pabu pabu but, um, at Pabu, yeah, some of the waves that we got, like again, some and some of the detailing that we've seen on the armor yeah, and yeah. the individual paint, like there's just so much intricate detail it's, that again, for me, it's the lighting great. too. The lighting yeah, really brings it's it to the be next great level. Seeing future projects, um, like Tales of the Empire, for example, because we know that they're just getting better and better and cleaner and cleaner. It's going to be at that um, level of quality, if not higher, every time from here on out. Like they're yeah. just learning and building as they go yeah no totally that's a very valid reason to be like just excited for future animated star wars regardless of what it is about just because we know how good it'll look you know and like i was saying during the episode i would love to see like a math like a super cut of just the wide shots of the bad batch like they're they're so gorgeous i could stare at them for hours and, and a particular favorite was the space station in this episode the way it yes. had like that long round arm that was slowly rotating so we could get these cool perspective shots like at one point we're seeing hunter 
and the ship's flying away from the station and and the, the curve of that of that, that that section of it is like rotating away from the camera so it creates this really cool like motion effect yeah it was really cool it makes me think of the ring world from the mandalorian episode that we only got for like oh geez no sorry that was a book of boba fett episode it just happens to be all about the mandalorian so easy mistake to make but it, it made me think of that kind of an environment too like i i love that we're getting so much more of that in star wars now but yeah dude like the bad batch is is definitely the pinnacle of star wars animation thus far and you can tell it's just gonna get better it's just gonna get better from here so i'm stoked to see what we get after this show but i don't want to see the end of this show i want it to keep going can't we get another season Someone, someone pester Dave until we get another season of this. Okay, I'm not, I'm not satisfied yet. I need more of the story. Awesome. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed our reaction to the Bad Batch season three, episode thirteen. This reaction was edited to comply with fair use. It's been chopped down to ten minutes in length, which means a lot of our reaction is missing from this. If you want to check out the full length, uncut version of our reaction, it's available on Patreon. There's a link in the description of the video to the Patreon page. Thanks again, and as always, may the force be with you.